like watching you all come on the comments. I know that I'm live and uh, I'm learning. I'm learning to double check my sound. Uh, it seems to be a common mistake, doesn't it? It seems to be a common mistake, but we're getting there. We're getting there. So good morning, everybody. It's a Thursday morning and I just cannot believe where the week has gone. This is week number five of 2022. We're in the month of February, and it's the third day, the third day of February, 2022. And our theme this morning, taken from the um, Morning Whispers uh, by Brian Simmons, our theme today is Faith in Your Victory. Faith in Your Victory. And the, it's taken from an epistle, 1 John and it's chapter 5, verses 4 and 5. That's our text. I remember, as a young Christian, memorizing this epistle. <laughs> I, I, unfortunately, I can't remember it all now, but when I was younger, when I was around about 18, I memorized this epistle and the epistle to the Philippians uh, in the <laughs> King James Version. Uh, how things have changed back then uh, when I was 18 um, you know King's, King James was the uh, authorised version was the only version that you were supposed to read it was the version that the Apostle Paul used <laughs> and I think, I think now we have so many we have so many versions now so many translations but that was the main translation, you know, the thee and thou. And you know what was strange? People prayed like that. We bless thee, Lord. They still prayed in that old English. Uh, and as you know, uh, the Apostle Paul didn't speak in English. He didn't speak in English at all. It's translated down to us, the book of uh, uh, the uh, authorized version, the King James Version which, uh, as we've mentioned before as well, that word uh, James in the New Testament is really Jacob, the Hebrew name, Jacob, but it was changed. A lot of the words were changed. Um, anyway, that's another matter. Uh, i tell you what we're going to do today. We're going to meditate on the verse. I'll give you an outline of the, of the epistle. Then we'll go over and pray for Afghanistan. We've got one more day um, of this week left. And we've been praying for the nations twice a day, praying for the nations. And this week has been Afghanistan with all the problems and difficulties there that people are facing. And, you know, prayer is a powerful thing. Our prayers are powerful. And as we pray, you know, we've been talking about Jacob's ladder going up to heaven, angels ascending and descending. As we pray, I believe the angelic hosts take our prayers and they take them up to heaven before the throne. And where two or three are gathered together, and we are gathered together globally, globally. I know it's something even, uh, well, people, my generation, my children's generation still struggle with with the technology, the fact that we can gather together. And I notice it when you come on and you write your good mornings and your good evenings and even good afternoons at time. It uh, shows us where we're coming from. And there's an old hymn that used to go, Jesus shall reign where'er the sun. In other words, the sun will never set wherever he reigns. Isn't that wonderful? Um, okay, so uh, let's write out, we're using graph paper, let's write out the verse, uh, and I'll read it to you first of all, and then we'll go to the paper and we'll, we'll write it out, we'll just take your time. Now the whole purpose of, of writing this is to contemplate on the text, um, contemplate on the text, and as I've said before, as the bee settles on the flower, it doesn't just land on the flower and take off. It takes time. And I want us just to meditate on this. We're using the Passion Translation. Um, and we're going to write it out. Okay. 
So I'll read it to you first and um, take you there. Let me see. It's verse, uh, I've underlined this. The only thing, the only problem I have with this translation is that the verse numbers are so small. So I'm going to uh, take it from, go and look for the verse 5 here. Uh, that's verse 4, and we want, yeah, we want verse 4. You see, every child of God overcomes the world. For our faith is the victorious power that triumphs over the world. So who are the world conquerors defeating us, defeating its powers? Those who believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that a wonderful phrase? So should we write that out? <clears throat> We're just going to take our time this morning. And I, I just want you to write it out with me. Um, I'm going to move this and bring my paper in. And also be able to also be able to, to see the verse. So starting from verse four. Right. <clears throat> starting from verse four, we write the title <coughs> excuse me. One John or first John. It's the epistle. So just take your time. First John, chapter 5. Why don't, I, why don't I just play you some music in the background? Let's try this. Let's see if it works. Uh, I've got to have it too loud, though. I'm just going to play some gentle music in the background for you. 1 John, chapter 5. Verses 4 and 5. Let's take that a little bit louder. Good to have you on, Linda, at 3 a.m. in the morning from Indiana. <laughs> oh, dear. I've been up early myself, I know the feeling. <laughs> uh, okay, just going to take this a bit louder. Okay. So we're writing this now. Don't forget, I use the dots. I'm doing every two representing the bait. You see. I'm writing in capitals. Well, I, I don't know. I just I'm so used to doing this. You see, comma, and just dwell on that. What do you see? What do you see? He's talking to the children of God. Every child of God. I love that word, every. Let me slower this music a little bit. Um, you can put in the comments if it is too loud, let me know. Every child of God. Just make sure you can see us. I underline that word every because that includes everybody. Everyone that's born of His Spirit. You see, every child of God overcomes and doesn't that fit in with our um, title which is faith in your victory so have faith you see every child of God overcomes the world idea to look up the Greek there because this is written in Greek 
for the word world. Every child of God overcomes the world, comma, for our faith, with our faith it's impossible to please God. For our faith is the victorious. See how we're just dwelling on each word as we write it. Victorious power. To space my words a bit more there. I'll just underline that. I love that. Have you got that? I'll just go over it again. You see, every child of God overcomes the world, for our faith is the victorious power. And then look at this. Let me just click on this a minute. That triumphs. It's another word you can look up. triumphs over. And when I underline something, you know, with the dots, it's, it's a word that I, I want to look up. It's a word I want to dig into deeper. So, let's read that again. You see, every child of God overcomes the world. Every one of us. There's not one. That you, you have the potential when you accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior and become a child of God, you have the potential within you to overcome. And then it goes on in verse 5. So let's go down a few verses here. having to look at the reading to write it. Verse 5. So who are, now that's a question. Just take your time, write it slowly. Who are the world So who are the world conquerors? Defeating. That's, that's you and I, that's every child of God. Defeating. It's power. I'll just write this underneath. I don't want to go off the page. And there's a question mark. So there's the question mark for you. Who are these conquerors? Is that you? Yes, it is. Why? Because you see, every child of God overcomes the world. 
For our faith is the victorious power that triumphs over the world. Who are the world conquerors, defeating its power? We re-emphasize that. There's that number two again. That letter bait. He repeats it. Who are the world conquerors defeating its powers? Is it power or powers? It's power. And there's the condition. There's always a condition to a promise. Those who believe You've got to believe. You've got to take the word of God at face value and believe what it says about you. Those who believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God? Then you have the power by your faith, to conquer. Ah, let me see. Those that believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Love that. See, everything's focused on Jesus. Even when we do the letters, it's focused. It's got to be focused on Jesus. Everything focused on him. Why? Because it's his faith, his life. Let me just move my microphone out of the way there. It's his faith, it's his life dwelling within us. We're not just obeying a set of rules and trying to work out and try and follow Jesus' teachings. It's his life flowing through us. That's the secret. Those that believe that Jesus is the Son of God, when you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, and you ask him to come into your life. And you have a mind change. And then you begin to confess him to others. You begin to witness. You, it becomes your testimony. It becomes your declaration. Then you can overcome. You can overcome the uh, culture of this age. You can overcome it. You don't have to be fashioned in its form. You're fashioned after the Lord Jesus Christ. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that a wonderful verse? So it's every child, number one. Every child of God. Number two, you can overcome the world. Why? Because Jesus said, I have overcome. I have overcome. And if he has overcome, then we can have faith in his victory, that it becomes ours. And then who are the world conquerors? Who are these conquerors? It says this, defeating its power. Those who believe that Jesus is the Son of God, that Jesus has come in the flesh. That's our central, central belief. Now what's very interesting is that this epistle, 1 John, is one of, how many epistles have we got? Let me see, how many did I write down? It's one of only two epistles in the New Testament. You have 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, but 1 John and the epistle to the Hebrews is the only epistles that do not name the author. Isn't that wonderful? The only two is that two again, that bait. Um, they do not name who the author is. And number two, four reasons why he wrote this epistle, John. He wrote it in around about AD 80, 85, after Rome, after the Romans had leveled Jerusalem. He wrote this to encourage the believers. Let me just read to you what I wrote down. Four reasons why he wrote this letter. One, 
to bring us into life union with God. Fellowship. To bring us into fellowship with God. Do you understand that? Do you understand you're not just learning a history lesson, lesson about the Lord. You're actually having a life flow, communion with him. Number two, that we might experience the fullness of joy. Isn't that wonderful? People say, where's the joy? How do you get the joy? You get the joy from union with him. You get the joy from fellowship with him, from interaction with the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, and then thirdly, that we might not continually live a life of sin. What do I mean by that? <clears throat> that we might not continually fall short of God's standard for us. Number three. And I did have a fourth one, yep. Yeah. Uh, the fourth one, and I, we were talking about this the other day, the early church. Uh, he wrote this because of false teachers coming in, sneaking in on the words, false teachers. The Apostle Paul wrote to the Ephesians when he left them, and he said, <clears throat> he said, after I leave, he said, false teachers will come in and they will try to divide the flock, teaching doctrines that diminish the glory of Christ. We should uplift him. That should be our central message. His kingdom, his government, he shall reign where'er the sun shall set. That's our aim. That's our love. That's our first passion is to follow the Lord. So that they're, they're the four things that are, that are uh, uh, well, there's another. There's another point here as well. It, it's to bring the church back into unity and clarity of faith, and to beckon them. This is in the notes of uh, Brian Simmons's New Testament on this reading. To beckon them to hold fast. To now, I'm going to use a word that we often talk against you know tradition but we're talking about tradition of men when we talk about traditions we talk about traditions man-made traditions but there are traditions that we should hold fast uh beckoning them to hold fast to a the tradition b the values of what they committed to when they first bowed the knee to the lord have you held fast to those or have you just watered them down? So that's why the epistle was written. Luke's gospel also wrote in, in his opening gospel that he wrote his gospel so that people would have clear facts and it was something that was done in order and an outline of Jesus' life. So there we have it. That's today's reading. Um, faith in your victory. Uh, the text is 1 John chapter 5, verses 4 and 5. Yes, I am. Faith comes from union with him. It's Galatians chapter 5, isn't it? It's the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit. We hear a lot about the gifts, but very little about the fruit. F-R-U-I-T. And one of the fruit of the Spirit is joy. <laughs> Why is it so many people fight against it? I don't know. I don't know. Amen. Amen. Okay, let's go to Afghanistan then with the power of the technology. And um, again, I'm just going to ask you to just lift up your prayers and um, pray. And then we'll have a quick look at the comments and Say hello to everybody. I'm doing that last. Do you notice that? That helps those that get on late. Um, so we're going to go there right now. And hopefully I press the right button. And there we go. We're going to zoom in. And there's Afghanistan. And we're praying right now in the name of Jesus. Uh, we 
Are you saying that Kimo Victory talks about coming a Christian and living every day as a Christian? Amen. Amen. Okay, so if you can join me then in prayer now, and uh, I'll put your comments up. If you want to use a pictograph, that's fine as well. Amen. Father God. Father God, we come before you this morning, this evening, wherever we are, Father. And we pray for the nation of Afghanistan. We first of all pray that your kingdom come in this part of the world, Father. And there will be an outpouring of your spirit we declare and confess that you are able to work out all things for good. No matter how bad they seem, no matter how bad they are, no matter what the situation is, you, Father God, are able. You are able. That's our declaration over Afghanistan. You are able, dear Lord to meet this nation. And we pray for her. We pray for her people. We pray for a government that will be raised up, that love the people, care for the people, love their nation, in the name of Yeshua. Amen, amen, amen. Janet, praying for revelation and visitation. Yes, we pray that, Father. We pray for the mothers. We pray for the, those that are, are leading this nation. There will be such a revelation, such a visitation, and that they will fall on their knees and confess you as Lord in the name of Yeshua. Thank you, Janet, from New Zealand. Diane, we join in prayer with you. Shalom, shalom over Afghanistan. We release that in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We release your shalom. Shalom, shalom, in Jesus' name. Eric. Bless the children and parents of Afghanistan, precious Lord. Their needs are great, but you are Jehovah, Jireh, another declaration, another declaration over Afghanistan. You are Jehovah, Jireh. And we believe, Lord, we believe you are able to provide for them according to your riches in glory in Christ Jesus. We say amen to that, Eric. We say amen to that. We join our amens. We lift our amens. We lift our so be it for this nation, for the starving children, for the parents who are at their wit's end, for the believers who are in hiding, for the martyrdom church, Father God, we ask you, pour out your spirit, pour out your spirit. Thank you, Kathy, for agreeing with that. Amen, amen, amen. Your kingdom come, in Afghanistan, Father, yes, thy kingdom come, Lord. Thy kingdom come in the name of Yeshua. Kimo, thank you for this, Kimo. 2015 study estimated some 3,300 believers in Christ from a Muslim background living in Afghanistan. 
let me just say that again. 2015 study estimated some 3,300 believers in Christ from a Muslim background living in the country. Father God, for that small seed, for that small seed we ask you, water the seed, water the faith of those believers in the name of Yeshua. In the name of Yeshua we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, just a few more and then we'll go to our reading. And Linda, yeah, we agree with you, Lynn. We agree. We pray this prayer of faith this morning. Thank you, Lord, for encountering your people with deep peace and love in a new and profound way. In new and profound ways. We thank you, Father. We thank you. We join our faith to that, Linda. Marilyn, that those who need to be hidden are hidden, Lord Jesus. What a wonderful, that's a wonderful way of putting it, Marilyn. Let those that need to be hidden, Father, be hidden. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Let it be, Lord. Let it be. Julie Ashmore, shalom over the ground in Afghanistan, the land, the hearts and minds of the people. In the name of Yeshua, let it be, Lord, let it be. We lift up your passionate pursuers of truth and liberty Bless them with your refreshing wind of your spirit, Lord. Thank you, Linda. Thank you, Eric. We agree with John. Water. And protect the seed you've planted in those precious new believers. In Yeshua's name. In Yeshua's name. Let it be, Father. Let it be. Nancy, hide them in full sight, Lord. Yes, make them invisible. Make them invisible, Father God. Let your shalom surround them. Let your shalom surround them, Father God. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Wonderful Savior. Wonderful Savior. Here we go. Thanks for joining us in that. I really, you know, every time we pray for this nation this week, I just felt the heart, you know, the heart strings. I just felt the passion of the Spirit of God for that nation. Uh, let's go to today's reading then and um, finish with this. Faith is your victory. Faith is the victory that overcomes the power of this world. Walk in the steps I have chosen for you, and no one will be able to hinder you for long. Faith opens the doors and sets you in the right place at the right time. You will be amazed at the opportunities that greet you as you're led by my spirit. Many are my servants who step out with small faith 
and witness me working in a great work. Never measure your faith by your fears, but insist that your fears submit to your faith. Your enemies fight in vain. Do not be discouraged by what can be seen with your eyes, but be filled with my faith as you set your gaze on me. Faith is the force that lifts you above your enemies because it enables you to see clearly. Embrace truth as your best friend. Marry wisdom, for she will be your perfect partner. Cherish my peace, and you will be kept far above the fray. Root yourself in my love, and faith will be the natural result. And then we have the verse, 1 John chapter 5, verses 4 and 5. Every child of God overcomes the world. For our faith is the victorious power that triumphs over the world. So who are the world conquerors, defeating its power? Those who believe that Jesus is the Son of God. 1 John chapter 5 verses 4 and 5. Isn't that wonderful? Wonderful reading for today. Wonderful prayers as well. Okay. I was going to show you something, but I don't... It would just go against the flow of the Spirit, so... Um, we're just going to close and just let the music play and I'm going to bring you know your credits up with your names and your quotes and your prayers and we'll finish there the Lord bless you keep you cause his face to shine upon you and grant you shalom shalom see you tonight at 5pm those that join us UK time 12 p.m. USA, Canada time, East, East, Eastern Coast. <laughs> okay, God bless everyone. God bless. Thanks for joining.